Oh, here we go. So basically, um, I'm starting this little series, I guess. I don't really know. Maybe I'll post this just one time and then move on with my life because there'll be three views and no one will care. Um, maybe some people will have some questions. Uh, where do I start? What's up, YouTube? My name's Dahlia and I'm going to just share my experience being in the Army Reserves. Uh, specifically being a musician in the Army Reserves. Specifically being a percussionist musician in the Army Reserves. Specifically being a female percussionist musician in the Army Reserves. Uh, A-R-M-P-F. ARMF. My experience in the Army Reserves, I... I love it. I honestly enjoy um, every opportunity I've had with it, all the people I've met from it. Um, everything's been like a pretty good experience, even if in the moment I kind of hated it. Um, looking back, it's just, I think it's one of the best decisions I've ever made. So I want to share, um, you know, how I kind of got introduced to it. Sorry, I'm looking at my screen. I should look here. Boom. I'm sitting on a cajon right now. My experience, how did I join? I had a friend, I did drum corps and drum line and all that stuff. I was a big marching, marching band nerd. I am still a big marching band nerd. Um, I still am very much involved in drum corps and WGI and all of that stuff. Teaching music is one of my favorite things. And I, um, the beginning. So how it started. One of my friends that I actually did drum corps with, he told me to go check out this unit that was not too far from me. I was like, oh, shoot. Okay, I'll check it out. So I got in contact with somebody there. I asked someone like, hey, can I come by and just, you know, see what this is about? I really didn't know anything about the army or any kind of military bands or anything in the military at all, honestly, before I joined. I probably should have, you know, done some research, but I figured it'd be a, a cool experience to at least see what it's about. I went to one of the battle assemblies or drills, whatever you want to call it. You meet one weekend a month. And in that weekend, you, you, you know, you get done whatever tasks need to be done, uh, whatever the priority is, because it's a very short amount of time to achieve a lot of different things that is needed. So I, I went one day just to kind of see what they were doing. I sat in on a rehearsal. I was not very good at drum set, but I you know, sat down, because drum set's kind of what the, the big thing is as a percussionist uh, in the army. Uh, so anyways, I showed up there. I was going to college at the time. I was going to CalArts studying uh, world percussion and you know I, w I didn't think that joining the army was great for me at that moment because uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do after I graduated and uh, I didn't think it was for me honestly I was very scared I remember seeing their final formation just standing on the side and everyone was you know very militaristic as they should be. What scared me the most was all the acronyms. All these letters that I was just like, what is happening? And everyone understood it. I was just like, this is an entirely new language. So that kind of drew me away, <laughs> or at least it scared me. Um, and then that combined with, you know, still being in school, not knowing what I want to do, um, I decided it wasn't for me. And then after I had graduated, this was the big thing, the student loan repayment program. I went to an art school, a private art school. Um, so I had some student loans when I graduated. And, you know, when I was going to school, I wasn't worried about that. And then when I left school, so I met with a commander. Um, he told me, you know, talk to a recruiter, um, go through all the, you know, whole normal process of. What's MAPS stand for? Military Entrance Processing something? Something. It's called MEPS. And you basically go to this place, 
you get a physical, you, you know, they make sure that you're fit for joining the military because they have all these certain requirements. Um, so I passed the audition, talk to the recruiter, go to MEPS, schedule my ship date, which I did a delayed entry, I think is what it's called, a delayed entry program because I was teaching at high schools at the time. So I couldn't really just leave my high school in the middle of the semester and um, you know go to, go to this 10 week training. So uh, they allowed me to, I enlisted in October, they allowed me to um, ship out I think in May of the, that following May. So between October and May, I could still go drill with my unit because I was technically, I already swore in, I was, I was part of that unit. Um, but I think I didn't know anything at the time, so I think I only joined them like once, which, you know, I wish I was with them more because I would have learned a lot. Um, but, you know, I was very timid, so I just kind of shrugged it off, I guess. So I recommend if you do uh, a delayed entry program for any kind of reserve unit, uh, still drill with your unit because you get paid for that, you get experience, you get a kind of get a feel for the unit that you're going to be with, all those people there, and you get to learn a little bit before you go to basic. So, um, what was it? May. May rolls around. I go to basic. Being a 26, we'll just say. 20, yeah, I was 26, being a 26 year old in basic training, um, it kind of sucks, honestly, because, uh, you know, you're a little more mature, you don't want to be pushed around, you kind of just, you know, if someone tells you to do something, you usually just do it, you don't want to fight it, uh, and usually if you're a little younger, you think, you know, why do I need to listen to these drill sergeants? Um, so, you know, just be ready for that if you're older. <laughs> that um, it is a lot of stuff that's out of your control. But, you know, my biggest thing was when I was there, um, keep your head down, do what you're told. And uh, the drill sergeants are gonna lead you the right way. Um, you know, they're gonna help you achieve everything you need to, help you reach your goals, um, pass all the tests, all the training. Um, you know, that's what they're there for. So that's the big thing for basic training, just trust, trust trust the process and be ready to run a lot and do push-ups and all you know all the stuff that they tell you about um so after that I did the split option so once you go to basic training you have to go to AIT which is the advanced individual training I think is what it stands for um basically to train you on what your MOS is the MOS is what your job is so as a musician you go to the Army School of Music, which is in Virginia, and it's beautiful there. So I, uh, I did the split option, which meant I did, over the summer I went to basic training, then, you know, during the school year, I was still teaching again, and then the following summer, I went to AIT, and that was just an entirely amazing experience for me too. Um, number one, because I was not a very strong drum set player, and because the Army focuses so much more on drum set, I had a lot of time to practice and I had learned a lot. Um, there were great teachers there, great gear, practice rooms were always available, um, and the people there were great. The class that I was in, everyone was super chill and I had the, honestly the best roommate. We still talk, we have like a little group chat, but um, my roommate and then there was another drummer and his roommate and we all have like a little group chat. We keep up with each other pretty often. And this was um, three years ago, two years ago, I guess only two years ago, or maybe three. So AIT, that was that. Um, that was another nine or 10 week course. And then, then I was with my unit. Um, oh, between, between basic training and AIT, that whole year that I was teaching, I was still drilling with my unit also. Um, because I had passed basic training, I had my uniform and everything, I was like officially part of the unit, like official, official. Um, so I was doing everything with them. I did some missions with them and, uh, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the basics of how my experience was for all the entry. Um, 
I guess my experience like as a human, if you're interested, I, I studied uh, classical percussion, orchestral percussion at uh, Cal State Northridge. I studied world percussion, like I said, at CalArts. Um, that's like my schooling. I marched a lot of drum corps, I marched WGI, I did Pulse for four years. I did a bunch of drum corps. Um, I kind of just bounced around everywhere. Worked my way to my favorite group, um, Phantom Regiment. I aged out there. That has nothing to do with the army. I just am sharing who I am, I guess. So you know me? Do you want to know me? So now, now where am I? I am, today is 2020. So I've been in the army reserves for about four years. Um, I graduated AIT about two years ago then, I guess. And um, since then, it's been, it's been a really cool experience. Um, obviously every unit's a little different, every branch is a little different, um, every person's a little different, you know, what, what you're there for, what you want out of it, your personality has a lot to do with it too, I guess. So, you know, you could talk to someone else in my unit and they, they might not uh, have the same kind of experience that I had, but we work together, you know, as a musician, you're part of a team and as a soldier, you're part of a team. So, you know, no matter what your background is, the people next to you are like your family. So it's been a really cool experience to get close to some of these people. So a typical weekend, you play with your groups. You do, you know, the regular army stuff, you have to do some kind of training, usually uh, keep up with your different shops. There's different uh, teams you're part of outside of the music side, but more of just like the general logistics admin, I guess you can call it. Um, so everyone kind of has dual responsibilities. During the pandemic, uh, things are definitely weird, right? Everyone knows. Um, you know, everyone's trying to make things work. Everyone's trying to achieve their missions. Every unit is trying to make sure they're still good on everything. So once we do get the green light to keep running, you know, at 100% like we did before, that we're good to go. Um, so we're doing everything in our power to maintain. I think everything's about maintaining right now. Um, obviously we can't really do a lot of performances or any. Um, we've been doing a lot of virtual stuff. We've been doing uh, recordings at home, submitting them to each other. These very talented guys in our unit uh, take all of the music that, that we sent them and they make it sound phenomenal. I'm gonna wrap it up. Hopefully you learned something about the army. Hopefully you learned something about the reserves. Hopefully you learned something about being a musician, about being a percussionist, about being a female. I'll, I can get to the female part later. Honestly, um, I, I don't feel like there's any kind of uh, discrimination but I just figured I'd throw that in there because maybe some females are afraid of joining. I would say don't be. If it's what you wanna do, do it. No one's gonna look at you differently. If, if that's your dream, if you think you can do it, do it. All right, so let me know if you have any questions. Again, here's my Instagram, my uh, Facebook, uh, you know, email, I guess. And then you can always just, you know, leave a comment here. Let me know if there's something you're worried about. You don't know if you can join because you didn't study drum set. You don't know if you can join because you, uh, you're not very good at your instrument. You don't know if you can join because, you know, there's no groups near you. Um, if you want it, you can make it happen. And I will help get you there because I have nothing better to do right now except for drum. So that's it. Uh, share this with your friends. If you know anyone who's been interested uh, in joining the military, if you, if you know anyone who is a musician um, that wants to keep pursuing music in another outlet and challenge themselves a little more, if you know anyone who used to play music and they really want to get back into it but they don't know how, this is a great way. So. Um, Hit me up, you know, spread the word, and I'll talk to you all soon.
I can't even keep track of myself, which is why I'm uh, not a, an NCO yet, I guess. Um, but one day soon, hopefully. Hopefully by the time this video comes out, that's not gonna happen. I'm really bad with brain stuff. I'm not good with remembering things. I'm just gonna sit here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this, cut a lot of this, cause I don't really know what I'm saying.